In recent years, the cost of data breaches has steadily risen. The additional vulnerabilities that occur due to the move to a remote workforce dramatically enhance the chances for cyber attacks and introduce several weak points for hackers to exploit. Additionally, automated hacking assaults and the capacity to exchange bitcoins via ransomware have increased the cost of cybercrime in general. Companies' workforces have transitioned to full-time work-from-home models, which gives rise to new attack surfaces. Threat actors target the people who are most vulnerable by taking advantage of current events and shifting situations. To better understand this growth in digital crime, let us go through a few statistics. 2020 brought with it a slew of new problems for both businesses and consumers. In the midst of a worldwide epidemic, forest fires, and political instability, it's easy to overlook a serious, albeit less physical threat. It set a record for data loss due to cyber attacks as well as the sheer volume of attacks. 2020 is already outpacing its predecessor. The graph below denotes the percentage of companies that fell victim to at least one cyber attack in the respective year. With the numbers growing steadily, we are yet to see the true crux of this digital revolution. In situations like these, penetration testing has been a gift for organizations worldwide. While security testing cannot guarantee a 100% solution, it can go a long way in securing those critical data from falling into the wrong hands. Hey everyone, this is Bhavab from Simple Learn. Welcome to this tutorial on penetration testing. Let's go through some of the topics we will be covering today. We start by learning about penetration testing and ethical hacking and the different use cases in the IT industry. Next, we know about the benefits of penetration testing and how they help organizations save money in the long run. Moving on, we familiarize ourselves with the different types of penetration testing or ethical hacking, with each serving a different category of personnel. In the next section, we read about the five distinct phases in every ethical hacking campaign and how they help clear up the extensive report at the end of every penetration testing session. Finally, we have a live demonstration on how we can check for vulnerabilities and the ways hackers can break into devices without adequate security measures in place. Let's start by learning about penetration testing in general. Organizations can define penetration testing based on the objectives of the test. All networks, applications, devices, and physical security components are included. It imitates the behavior of harmful individuals or the hackers. Experienced cybersecurity specialists use penetration testing to strengthen a company's security posture and eliminate any weaknesses that leave it vulnerable to attacks. Penetration testing, when done correctly, goes beyond simply preventing thieves from gaining unauthorized access to a company's systems. It generates realistic scenarios that demonstrate how well a company's present defenses might perform in the face of a full-scale cyber assault. The simulation aids in the discovery of the sites of exploitation and the testing of IT breach security. Businesses may acquire professional unbiased third-party input on the security procedures by conducting frequent penetration testing. Pen testing, while relatively time-consuming and costly, can aid in the prevention of highly destructive and expensive breaches. A white hat hacker employs hacking talents to find security flaws in hardware, software, or networks. On the other hand, white hat hackers follow the rule of law when it comes to hacking instead of black hat hackers. They assist firms in conducting penetration tests to analyze their security index and make the necessary improvements. Ethical hacking provides a full audit of your security policies and in the case of bug bounties, can assist you in identifying holes in existing operational systems. It takes a far broader approach to cybersecurity than penetration testing. Whereas penetration testing focuses on system flaws, ethical hacking allows actors to utilize any attack tactics available to them. They can take advantage of system misconfigurations, send phishing emails, launch brute force password assaults, breach physical boundaries, or do whatever else they feel will get them access to critical information. Because thieves are progressively changing up the approaches and launching multi-layered complex attacks, this is incredibly useful for determining just how exposed the organization is to cyber threats. Considering the vast domain that is ethical hacking, we have multiple categories of penetration testing methodologies. Let's cover them in the next section. When configuring a security system, testing is critical to preventing hackers from penetrating the perimeter. There are three sort of tests black box, gray box, and white box. In the black box testing, the tester receives no information during the penetration test. 
In this case, the pen tester takes the method of an unprivileged attacker from initial access and execution until exploitation. This scenario is the most realistic, showcasing how an attacker with no inside knowledge may target and compromise an organization. However, because of this, it is also the most expensive alternative. White box penetration testing, which is also known as crystal box testing, entails sharing all network and system information with the tester, which includes network maps and passwords. This saves time and lowers the overall cost of a project. A white box penetration test effectively simulates a focused assault on a given system using as many attack paths as feasible. In a gray box penetration test, also known as a transparent box test, very restricted information is present with the tester. Gray box testing is beneficial for understanding the extent of access a privileged person may get and the possible damage they could wreak. Gray box tests achieve a mix between depth and efficiency and may be used to mimic either an insider danger or an assault that has infiltrated the network perimeter. Now that we covered the basics of penetration testing and the relative categories, one must know how these testing campaigns benefit the organizations conducting them. Let us go through a few perks of penetration testing. Regular penetration testing helps your business assess the security of online applications, internal networks, and external networks. It also assists you in understanding what security measures are required to achieve the degree of protection your company needs to protect its people and assets. Prioritizing these risks offer firms an advantage in anticipating hazards and preventing harmful assaults. Penetration testing is similar to a real-life hacker rehearsing for a real-life hack. Regular penetration testing helps you be proactive in your real-world approach to reviewing the security of your IT infrastructure. The process identifies gaps in your security, allowing you to correct any flaws before an actual attack happens. It is undeniably expensive to recover from the effects of a data breach. Legal fees, IT cleanup, consumer protection programs, lost revenue, and dissatisfied customers may cost businesses millions. Penetration testing regularly is a proactive strategy to remain on top of your security and may assist in preventing financial damage from a breach while safeguarding your brand and image. Penetration testing aid in meeting the compliance and security duties imposed by industry standards and regulations such as PCI, HIPAA, FISMA, and ISO 27001. Having these tests done regularly help demonstrate due care and your commitment to information security, all while avoiding the significant fines associated with the non-compliance. With the entire process seeming to be a lengthy ordeal, what are the multiple phases in the process? Theoretically, we have to follow a five-stage process. Reconnaissance is the first phase of the penetration test. In this phase, the security researcher collects information about the target. It can be done actively, meaning you are collecting information by sending a request directly to the target and interpreting it. Passively, where you are collecting data without contacting the target or both. It helps security firms gather information about the target system, network components, active machines, etc. This activity can be performed by using information available in the public domain and using different tools. The scanning phase is more tool-oriented rather than performed manually. The penetration tester runs one or more scanner tools to gather more information about the target. By using scanners such as war dialers, port scanners, network mappers, and vulnerability scanners, the penetration tester collects as many vulnerabilities which help in turning to attack a target in a more sophisticated way. The third phase is the gaining access of the system. In this phase, the penetration tester tries to connect with the target and exploit the vulnerabilities found in the previous stage. The exploitation may be buffer overflow attacks, denial of service DOS attacks, session hijacking, and many more. Pen tester extracts information and sensitive data from the servers by gaining access using different tools. In the fourth stage, the hacker has to maintain access. The penetration tester tries to create a backdoor from himself. It helps the penetration tester to identify hidden vulnerabilities in the system and can later access the machine should the need arise. In the final phase of clearing and covering tracks, the penetration tester removes all logs and footprints which help the administrator identify his presence. 
This allows the penetration tester to think like a hacker and perform corrective actions to mitigate those activities. With the cost of cybersecurity platforms going up, trained penetration testers receive an excellent level of remuneration for their efforts. As per reports, the average yearly salary for a penetration tester is 6 lakh Indian rupees or $110,000 in the American counterpart. Finally, let's go over some of the ways hackers can identify vulnerable positions on a system to gather information in a live demonstration. In this demo, we will start by setting up a VPN connection that will allow us to access to a vulnerable network by creating a local virtual group over the internet. We then try to scam the victim machine for breachable entry points, find the username and password of the user in question and eventually grab the root password from the device. To start our demonstration, we are going to need a vulnerable machine to work on. Now this vulnerable machine can be found on the website known as TryHackMe which is a service catered towards penetration testers. Before we connect to the machine, we need to join the network where the machine is located. We can do that using an OVPN file which is short for OpenVPN protocol. To connect to this OVPN file, we are going to go into a new workspace on Parrot Security. We are going to activate the root access and we are going to connect to it. Hacktest.ovpn Once we see the message initialization sequence completed, we can be sure that we have connected to the network which has the vulnerable machine. Now to start the vulnerable machine, we are going to click this button and wait for a few seconds. As you can see, it gives a one minute countdown before it shows you the IP address. Now remember whatever the IP address we receive here, it is a machine being launched on the TriHackMe servers but we can access that machine because of the OVPN connection that we have just set up using this file. This OVPN file can be found on the TriHackMe servers profile section which I downloaded beforehand. As you can see, we now have the IP address of our victim machine. Let's try if we can reach this machine or not. We're going to copy the IP address and we're going to try and ping to the machine. If the connection is successful and we have joined the network, we should be able to see some response over here. As you can see, we are receiving uh, request pings from the victim machine which means that we have already joined the victim network. Now that we are confirmed we are able to access the vulnerable machine. Let's run the first step in a penetration test which is reconnaissance. Let's run up and map scan. We are going to use the flag of SV so that we can know which version of the service it is running. We're going to take up the IP address and paste it here. This scan will only be possible if the OpenVPN connection is up and running. As you can see, it is still running. And we have our results over here. We're running the scan so that we can find the services running on the host machine that we will run and map against. We conclude that a web service is running actually on port 80 as we can see over here which is using the Apache server system. In addition to this there is a SMB Samba service as well running on ports 139445. Now that we know that we have an Apache server we can use this IP address open it on the browser. Okay. Since the current home page is not accessible, we can use some other URLs as well. As far as Apache servers are concerned, there are a certain set of URLs that can be used to open. However, if we go to the URL which is 
IP address slash development. This opens up a new folder. If we try to check the contents of these files, this is for the dev.txt. You can see the version of the Apache HTTP server that is being run. This is the dev.txt. If we go back and we check the second file as well, it says that the content C shadow has the credentials. Okay, if we go back again, SMB has been configured, which we have already found out nmap that it is running a Samba server. Now, with this version of the Apache server, we can find version specific exploits that can be run on Metasploit, but there is sometimes no, no need of that. We can use another technique as we now know that there are multiple users that is being run over here. We can use a tool known as enum for Linux. What it does this is acts and enumerates the windows and Asamba systems. To run that command, we're going to use enum for Linux minus a and we're going to take IP address of the machine. I'm going to paste it here. What this will essentially do is provide us usernames that are being stored in the victim machine. It's going to take some time to find out the usernames. Once we find those out, we can run the necessary attacks. As we have already seen on the NMAP, it is also happening in SSH port. So if we find the username and we find a single hash that can be cracked, we can use the SSH to get inside the machine. Right now, we have to wait for the results of the enum for Linux command. As you can see, we have found two users of the machine known as K and Jan. I think we can stop the enumeration right now since we have the two users of this machine. Next step what we can do is we can try to SSH into the machine. Now to run the SSH command, we're going to need the password of one of the users. For this example, let's say we go with the user of Jan. To brute force, we're going to use the Hydra tool. This is like an example command. This is how we can use. Let me just copy this and paste it over here. All right. Hydra minus L. User, as we have already decided, we're going to use the user Jan. And we're going to use SSH for the IP address. We're going to copy it from here and paste it here. Now for the password list, we're going to use a word list, which has a few passwords already present in it. For this example, I'm going to use the rockyou.txt file which has like millions of passwords already stored in it. What the Hydra will do is it will try to bypass the SSH console on the machine using the passwords present in the rockyou.txt file. We will give the path of rockyou over here like this.
and we're going to run it. As you can see, it's mentioned that it's attacking SSH at this IP address. Now this attack is going to take a while and after this attack is done, we are going to get the SSH password, which is basically the credentials of the Jan user in the victim machine. For now, I'm going to stop this attack. What I would recommend is for you to run this attack and write down the password that you received in the comment section below. The password that we receive from here can be used to log in into the machine. Let's try that once. To SSH into the machine, we're going to write SSH user at the rate IP address. We're going to write yes and press enter. Now we're going to enter the password that we have found after running the Hydra command. I'm going to type the password and press enter. And we have logged in, as you can see. Now, if we try to look around, there are no directories over here. Okay, so let's go one step back. Give a space over here. Okay. Let's go to the second users folder. Okay. These are the contents of the K folder and you can see there's a dot SSH folder over here. So we're going to enter that. Let's have a look the files in this folder. And we can file an RSA ID over here, which if I'm not wrong, should be an RSA private key, which can be used to SSH into the machine. Here we go. You can see it's a big in RSA private key and it should end here as well. Now what this private key does, this hash will be used to log SSH into the machine when using the user K. Once this hash is cracked using Hydra or any other cracking software like John the Ripper, we can easily use the passphrase to log in into the machine with the user of K. What I am going to do is copy this private key I'm going to launch a new terminal to create a new file known as nano id paste the private key over here and save it as you can see we have saved the file over here now this hash can later be used to crack into the machine using the user of k this hash can be cracked using either john the ripper hydra or there are other cloud mechanisms that can be used to crack this machine. After it is cracked, we can use the passphrase derived from it to SSH into the machine. To perform the SSH entry, we're going to use this command SSH I. We're going to use the same file which we received. We're going to write the username which is k 10.10. .10. We can just copy it from the here, right? Minimize this and paste the IP address over here. Or, or we can do one more thing. We're going to use a sudo command together as well. It's better. sudo ssh enter the system password. This passphrase is the one that we received after cracking the hash in this ID file. Whichever password you received after cracking this using Hydra or John the Ripper, please write the password in the comment section so that we can know that we have successfully cracked the password. We're going to write the passphrase over here, press enter. And as you can see, we have entered the system of K. Here we're going to press ls and we find the backup file of the password. We're going to write cat password back and here is the final root password. 
So as you can see, we have now we have now received the final root password of the primary user and we have already cracked the password of the other user that is Jan. So this is the entire process of how you can use Nmap to find out the vulnerable points. You can see which are the softwares that are running, which versions they are running and which of those versions have a legitimate claim as an insecure exploit. Hope you learned something new today. If you have any questions regarding the topic, please let us know in the comment section below and we will get back to you as soon as possible with a solution. Subscribe to our channel for more informative videos and thanks for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.